Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast for the Neil Haley Show and Celebrity Interviews live from the Grotto with Greg Hanna. Greg, what's going on, man? How are you? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, Neil. How are you today? Fantastic. We talked to somebody from the Waltons before, but we've not talked to the matriarch. Olivia Walton from, again, uh, Michael Learned. Michael, thanks for stopping by from the Waltons. I'm so excited. It's interesting. We're going to use a little bit of a fun thing. I found some amazing questions you were never asked thanks to ChatGBT. Go figure AI, and I'll have some interesting questions for you, but I appreciate you coming back on, Michael, to talk about the Waltons and uh, you know how it just lives on forever, right? And that's got to make you happy, right? It does, sure. Absolutely. I get residual checks for 0 0.06 cents. Okay, so how, is that every week or is that monthly or how's that work? You know what happens when you first do it? You get nice little chunks of residuals. But after it's been running for, what, 50 years now? I think 40, 40 at least, you you know, that they, they trickle down and you get a check occasionally. One, I got one check for 0, 0.00. It cost, um, them, oh it cost them more to send the, the check than, than was in the check, so. But the good news is that you always have the opportunity to do appearances. You always have the opportunity to talk to your fans. And that's got to feel great, even though the residual is not as big as it was at the beginning. No, it does feel great. And and we're lucky because we have wonderful, nice fans. You know, they're good people. All right. All right. Go great. Oh, that's great. First question. That's so great to speak with you. I really enjoyed that show growing up. It's a lot of fun. Watched it with my mom and dad. Um, so, so let me ask you a question, uh, if you wouldn't mind, Michael, um, you know, the, the Waltons, it, it portrayed a very simpler way of life. You know, how would you say that that compares to how we are today now in 2023 and how the family structure is compared to how it was then? And, and what are the pros and cons do you think of that now? Well, that's an, that's a, a tough question because, um, I think it's not all that different to tell you the truth. I think a lot of families are struggling. A lot of families are still close. Um, I went to Bangladesh a couple of years ago for Save the Children, and uh, everybody knew who I was. I was shocked. I went to this tiny little village in, in the middle of seemingly nowhere, and um, people had seen the show, and they related to it because it's about family. So family is family. And that's what keeps it living on then, right? People are wanting to see good families, uh, healthy families that go through things, but healthy, good families. And that's what attracts the Waltons, it sounds like. I think it was well written too. There was a lot of humor and uh, we older, we, the adults, the mom and dad and Richard on the show, we, we used to have to struggle a little bit with Earl um, and say, you know, can you make these people a little less perfect? Because everybody's going to hate us if, if if we never make a mistake and if we're always nice. So, you know, he had Elizabeth steal a doll from my Godsy store. And, um, you know, he had to search to try to find things because he, he knew all these people. These are real people that Earl was writing about. And... Um, he didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, especially his mom, which was me. Uh, so I used to say, Earl, you got to have her scold, at least scold the wrong child and make a mistake. Otherwise, everybody's going to hate her. Nobody likes a perfect person, you know. <laughs> well, that's your question. Well, we um, interviewed Mary Ellen a few weeks ago. He, you know, one of the things that she told us about on her YouTube channel that she talks about the difficulty sometimes of of acting on tv she talked about timing and 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 when you ate you had to you know basically eat again the same way you did when they did the next scene this type of stuff did, do you have any remembrances or 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 thoughts around you know the difficulties of acting on tv or maybe the the fun parts about acting on tv well the hardest part of acting on television are the hours you know there a 15 hour day is is a normal day 12 hour day is a short day and sometimes uh, i shot one day in new york on a different series and it went for 19 hours that's a long day and uh so it's exhausting it's a grind it's i i i, I sometimes tell people it's the difference but theater is like a 
racehorse uh, running a race. You go from A to Z. You run the race. You go the whole thing. Television is more like a plow horse plowing a field. It's stop and go, and then there's a rock. You got to get the rock out of the way, and it's stop and go. Um, so I, I find television actually more exhausting than doing theater because theater is exhilarating and your adrenaline's pumping and television, it's kind of get up and do it for, for, for a second or a minute or two. And then you, you, you sit down and wait for them to relight the next shot and, and you kind of, it, it, it's just a whole different thing, but mm. I wouldn't have changed it for the world. It put my kids through school and bought braces for them and, you know, and I'm looking at you, the background here, you look like you're in a dungeon, are you okay? Yeah, you know, it, it, I hope every once work. in a while, if I misbehave <laughs> at work, you know, they, they put they me in the dungeon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All so right. It's like there's some wine to keep you company in the background. Yeah, there's a little bit of wine there to keep me good. company. That's yes. good. Okay. <laughs> and else, always. Now, um, Michael, the character of Olivia Walton was known for her nurturing and caring nature. How did you approach portraying her mother figure to not only her children, but also to the other characters who sought guidance and support? I'm not, I don't understand the question really. The other oh. characters in the show? Or... Yeah, it's the other characters in the show. Hmm? Yeah. Well, it, as I said, it was a bit of a struggle sometimes with Earl because we were a little bit of kind of know-it-alls, but I, I kind of like that part where we Olivia was a little judgmental she wasn't a perfect person she she was a little judgmental of people that didn't think the way she did and um she wasn't always perfect it's boring to play a perfect person because none of us are and um it's kind of fun every now and then when a person acts out of character you know when it, Olivia's a loving good-hearted, all-knowing, wise mom. But every now and then, uh, when Earl would allow her to act out of character, that was fun for me. Oh, I don't cool. think I answered your question, but... I... Yeah, you definitely did answer it. Go ahead. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, in, in the Waltons, you know, there were so many messages and, and there were so many values that were portrayed back then. Do you, do you think all those messages and all those values um, hold true today still? And, you know, if not, which ones do you think, you know, have either loosened a little bit or have just gone by the wayside? I think I think they're still here today. I live in a I live in L.A. Um, I live in Beverly Hills. Um, we have a neighborhood. We talk on the street. We walk our dogs. Um, if if I needed some sugar, I'd go across the street and knock on the door and say, can 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 you spare some sugar? I'm out. Um, I don't think it's all that different to tell you the truth. I think we've got computers and fast cars and all the stuff that we, you know, television and all this stuff that they didn't have back in those days. But I think in terms of family structure and neighborhoods, we still have that. I, I'm very optimistic about our country. I, I, I believe in it. I believe that a lot of people are still living from paycheck to paycheck and they're managing to raise their kids and send them to school. And um, we're, we're, we're good people. Interesting you say that. And then that's the thing that I guess that depicts this. And then this is interesting part of it is because I, you know, never watched the Waltons really. Uh, Michael, uh, it was, I guess it was right before the time period for me. I was born in 1973. I'm 50 years old. In the setting of the Waltons in rural Virginia during the Great Depression, this, it, it really interests me to want to watch the show now. Uh, and World War II offered a unique backdrop. How did the historical context of the show influence storytelling experiences of the characters? So that's the thing that, you know, we hear the word the Waltons, but we didn't understand it. it's a, during a different time. And we still see these same characteristics in place but how did you kind of place your role as olivia when you talk about historically the time period i never thought about about it really to tell you the truth i tried to live in the moment on the set with the kids i love those kids they're now middle-aged people with their own kids um but the love was very real and the, the affection that ralph and i had for each other was beyond words i mean we had 
we had a real love for each other. And um, I think, I, I don't think you can fake that kind of energy. I think that energy was very real and potent and people, that's what people were responding to. It was a, uh, Pam Palafronia, um, well, she, she cast Gunsmoke. I'm not sure that she cast the Waltons as well, but um, the casting of the show was pretty terrific. And I got so lucky um, because I really wasn't right for the part. I wasn't what they were looking for. Um, they were looking for a, a woman with, well, long red hair and her middle you know, middle 40s, and I had short blonde hair, and I was 32 just, and um, a woman named Ethel Winant went to bat for me with Fred Silverman. Apparently, he didn't want me, and he, and rightfully so. I wasn't right for the part. I wasn't what they were looking for, um, but she went to bat because she used to come up and watch shows at ACT in San Francisco, where I was um, performing with my ex-husband um, Peter Donat and she would come up and watch the shows and so um, the story I heard years later was that she wrestled Fred Silverman to the ground over you <laughs> that's what I was told <laughs> and God bless her for that well, that's great you know it, you kind of touched on a question I was going to ask was you know is there a particular role um, prior to the Waltons that helped you prepare to be Olivia you know what would that be and now you kind of mentioned that other role that uh, your friend saw you act with your uh, former husband in. And, you know, what, what was that role all about? And, and why did you think that was? Uh... Well, that was actually Private Lives, uh, which was uh, directed by, um, um, oh, my God. Um, who directed Private Lives? Okay. Francis Coppola. I'm just, I'm just, I haven't had my breakfast, so I'm just having a That's okay. brain fart. But um, yeah, Francis Coppola, and he was wonderful um, because Private Lives is can you can be played quite stylistically, you know. And he he was on me all the time. He said, "Go for the truth. Go for the truth. Stop stop acting." And it turned out to be funnier the more we played the truth of what was happening uh, th than if we had just sort of played it for la di da. And um, it was wonderful working with him. I was. And he, he would disappear every weekend. We'd say, where are you going? He's going, well, I have to go to uh, L.A. And uh, he was driving a little VW, rusty little old VW, all bent up, all dented up. And he said, well, I'm going to L.A. I'm editing this movie I made. Well, the movie was The Godfather. So, <laughs> wow. um, <laughs> yeah, he was directing Private Lives in San Francisco with me and editing The Godfather in L.A. on the weekends. Wow. <laughs> did he think the godfather was going to be as big as it was i didn't even know what it was um and for a long time i i couldn't watch it i didn't i was in it uh, apparently one, a photograph of me is floating down the river somewhere in there but um yeah he uh no that's apocalypse now sorry no. no but godfather no i don't think he knew i don't think anybody knew and and he was you know he was he's such a down-to-earth guy he's just uh I don't know I haven't seen him in years but I I really loved working with him he's an actor's director he knows he knows the process so he knows how to help get you where you need to go wow. did you work on any other projects with him uh besides that one no, we were going to. Um, he said he was going to write a part for me. He, he called me up and he said, you're going to play Marlon Brando's wife in Apocalypse Now, and you're going to be the only woman in the movie. <laughs> and it didn't turn out that way. I couldn't do it for some reason. I was, uh, I guess I was doing a nurse or a, some series and uh, I couldn't do it. And, and I lost out on that one. Boy, that, that hurt. <laughs> I would have loved that. And it, it, you know, he works so... He's such a genius. He just, uh, got, it probably from the beginning when he first conceived the whole thing, it probably changed a thousand times because he'd get an idea and then change it around. And, mm. You know, you know, when I was thinking about the Waltons before Greg asks his signature question. And basically when I think about the Waltons, what do you think the fans would say why they love it so much? I mean, if you go on to Facebook right now, there are Facebook groups, about four or five fan Facebook groups with over 20,000 members in each one of them. 
What do you think, you know, keeps this going for so long that made it such a great show that people just love it today and will want to talk about it all the time? Family. That's the only thing. And the stories were good. I mean, there were some real stories. There's not a whole lot of storytelling on television today. Um, there are exciting shows. There's wonderful. I love Netflix. There's all kinds of wonderful stuff. Uh, on television, but um, not a lot of just story, gentle storytelling, you know, the, the Dust Bowl, cause it's, it's almost, I think the show could almost be shown in schools because it is the history of this country at a certain period in, of time. I'm going to go back and watch it because I enjoy history and I would have never known that. And I forget what stations the Waltons is on now but there's somewhere on cable right now you're playing. And that's the thing that you live on forever uh, through tele iconic television shows. And I wonder if that will continue the way we talk about ones in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, if today's TV will live on forever or it will not like some of these shows have. Greg, go ahead with your last question. And, and this, is a, this is one, Michael, to really think about. Yeah, that's great. You know, and, and I was thinking before we do that, you know, maybe if if you and I and we get all our friends to watch, then maybe we can get those uh, checks up to maybe a nickel for Michael. Or seven cents, maybe. Or seven, yeah, I know. That'd be <laughs> great. Well, Michael, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure uh, to meet you and have a chance to speak with you. Um, you know, before we go, I have this question for everyone. It's for myself, really, to help me be better and for my audience and people that are able to listen to this. Um, what do you feel is the most important thing in life that you've ever learned? Well, I'm still learning. I'm still learning, but, um, you know, Winston Churchill said, um, humility is an accurate assessment of your assets and liabilities. And I, I think, I guess I mean humility because it doesn't mean you you become a doormat and let people walk all over you. It just means that you're humble enough to know your good qualities and, and your flaws and your dark side and so that you can work on the dark side and, and, and not wallow in the good side. You know what I mean? And, um, that's that's something I, I think is a life journey. You're always relearning it, um, tr trying to put things in perspective, in proper perspective. Um, I I suffer terribly from illusions. You know, I have a lot of illusions about a lot of things, and when those get popped, I just cave. You know, and uh, it's my illusion. I have to be responsible for it. That's Great, thank I you. Beg your pardon. I thought I had my cell phone. I thought I had turned it off. No, Michael, that is just a great information. Your website's the best place people can find information on you, right? Is that correct, Michael? Or social media? Yes, I, I actually have somebody, uh, Lisa England, who's working on it. I, I never have before. So now I've joined the group, I guess. And um, she's she's doing a nice job, I think. Okay. Well, we appreciate it, Michael. Thanks again. And thanks for the time and the memories. And I'll be sharing this in Facebook groups for sure. This interview to the Waltons groups that I've joined. And I hope that we'll definitely have another chance to chat soon. So thanks again. Thank you both. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys. That was Celebrity Interviews Live from the Grotto with Greg Hanna. Guys, take care.